Welcome back to They Did What, your source for the internet's craziest, most entertaining stories, where I go with them, analyze them, and most certainly make one of them. Today, I'm going to go over a story title. I was there for my girlfriend during her worst, and she walked out on mine during mine, and karma is real. Big shout out to Daryl for sending me the story. And guys, this story is about a guy who, at the time, was 35 years old. His girlfriend was 28 when he met her. This is back in 2016. And they started going out. They were co-workers, which is a bad idea, but it is what it is. And at first, everything was great. Her family was great. Great to him, all that. And you're going to see that eventually she loses her job understandably difficult and he's there by her side here's her rock he's there for her they're there it's gonna be okay and she was okay and then down the road he loses his job but guess what she doesn't share the same love and support that he showed her and you're gonna see where this whole thing goes however karma does definitely come back into play where this guy ends up being on top and she gets what's hers in the end and again I thought it'd be a very good one to go over here guys just to show you how people's actions, not their words, show you who they are. And you can have people that are more than happy to be with you during the good times, but they will show you who they really are and how much you really matter to them during your tough times. And that's where it really counts. So this is why, for your relationship, guys, you must spend years with your girl if you consider getting married. I think in 2023, you get married nowadays, you're really risking a lot. But I know a lot of you are going to do it anyway. You spend years with her, and you get to see what she's like during all the different things that real life puts in your place. Job losses, death of family members, who knows what can happen. And by going through those things and seeing how she is, that will determine, that will show you her true colors and what you can expect if, in fact, you decide to jump into the uh, the abyss of called marriage one day. Very good one to go over here. And, of course, showing you how little things like they always come back and karma sometimes really does come bite somebody that does you wrong in the butt and you and if you're lucky you get to watch it so it starts off says here uh, he says hello everyone i was a 35 year old male at the time and my now ex-girlfriend was a 20 year old 28 year old female at the time it started in the fall of 2016 i was working at a school district as a tech support it was the beginning of the school year and the teachers were already setting up their classrooms for the new school year i was scrambling around campus resolving tech issues I got the call to set up this new Spanish teacher who just started a week prior and had no technology in her classroom. I can see where this is going. I shared the responsibility of the high school with another tech. I asked my teammate for help. I planned for both of us to scope out the classroom to make, make a list of equipment. When we got to the classroom, there were two teachers. An older teacher and my soon-to-be girlfriend. The girlfriend caught my attention right away and it seems I caught hers as well. After the initial meeting, I noticed I was getting called to the classroom a lot. I finally asked her out, and it went like this. Well, good for him for having the balls to ask a girl out. However, she's a co-worker. Bad idea. You don't mix business with pleasure. You don't date the women you work with. Even if he's tech support for the school, regardless, same employer. Bad idea. I say this all the time. I don't care how hot she is. I don't care how cool she is. If you go to a different school and that's fine but not in the same place but anyhow he at least had the balls to ask her out but just was misplaced he said here and by the way he does do a lot of dialogue breaking down conversations between him and her so bear with me he said to her hey i was curious to ask if you want to go out sometime and she said i don't know let me think about it as a typical line he said oh it's oh it's a no hey don't sweat it it's all good let us know any other tech issues I activated ghost mode and avoided her at all costs. My teammate saw I was avoiding her, and he is an older gentleman in his 50s. He asked me about it since, I, since he saw the, her caller ID on our desk phone. I replied that if he could handle all her requests in exchange, I would take any tick he dreaded to do. His reply was, any ticket? And he said, sure. So we shook on it. He picked up the phone and said, oh, hey, yeah, he is busy helping someone else. I'll be right over. Click. He smiled and said, good luck with this ticket. He transferred me to a ticket from another teacher we both disliked. I figured bro did me solid. I will not let a fellow bro down. This happened for a week and a half. I had heard through the grapevine that there was someone asking, looking for me at my office. Gee, I wonder who. She finally cornered me and asked me to drop off a spare USB cable for her printer in the classroom. I agreed and she left for her classroom. 
I showed up 10 minutes later with the USB cable in hand. I, uh, I hand her the cable and turn around to start to walk away. She speaks up loudly and says, please come in. And I reply, your cable, madam. And she ignored the cable and said, look, I thought, I thought it over and let's go out tonight. He says to her, wait, why? I thought you were clear last week that you weren't interested. And she said, is it, so is it yes or no? And he says, all right, let's see. How about we grab dinner tonight and talk? I'm thinking it's a bluff on her part. And she says, here's my phone number. She writes and hands it to me. What is yours? And I say, here you go. Okay, so it turns out that she was probably just playing hard to get in the beginning. Let me think about it. We started texting and we went to dinner that night. Since that night, we were going out every chance we could get. After some time, we became official and met each other's families. My family liked her. Her family liked me. Her father from the jump said, don't think of me as just her father. I hope we can be friends. Well, that's nice. That's a nice good way to start that the family's friendly to you. Good sign there. I was taken back by the gesture. Normally, fathers would look at me with suspicion. We are men, after all. We know what we are after. That is true. Uh, the one aspect I started to see at my radar was my one male friend of her, of uh, the one male friend of hers. Let's call him Tony. I found that he had made it uh, known to my girlfriend that he had feelings for her prior to going out with me. Having a girlfriend that has male friends that, that she hangs out with is a bad thing to have. Not good. Because those guys usually are just guys that are waiting around for their turn, and right there you heard it. My girlfriend friend zoned him hard. I was unaware of it until I met Tony, and he gave me a dirty look and refused to stick his hand out and shake it. What a jerk off. I'd make it clear we're going to have a relationship, no guy friends that you're hanging out with or anything like that. And if she doesn't like it, labels you as controlling or insecure, and be like, all right, well, it was fun while it lasted. I wish you all the best. But then he has to work with her. This is why you don't date co-workers. He left me hanging. My girlfriend then explained afterwards on friend zoning Tony. Tony had turned her friend group against my girlfriend, essentially cutting her off from the group because he was hurt. What a bitch. A uh, month passed by, and now it's the middle of spring, and my girlfriend found out her teaching contract was not renewed, and she was bummed to say the least. She was depressed and down and feeling like a failure. Her contract would, would uh, end in June. I explained it's not the end of the world, and I encouraged her, rooted for her, and helped her with her interview skills, practiced mock interviews, reminded her to apply for the jobs before the deadlines. Okay. It's not the end of the world. He's there to help her out. She'll get a new job. Fair enough. He is by her side when uh, she's going through a tough time, the uncertainty of, of a few, not having a job. Wait till you see what happens down the road when he has to go through the same thing to see if she shares the same kindness to him. I believe, tw I says here, I believe twice in her that she would turn it all around. Her family saw it I was with her by her side and being her rock. I did, and I caused, because I, I cared for her. By summertime, she found another job and she was happy. See? This is why a guy always has to be the rock, the strong one, no matter what. That's what the women want. Also that summer, I found another job at another school district. It was the highest paid to date, with room for growth. The director wanted me to assist in making the department into more efficient and streamlined operation with my skills. I felt on top of the world, having a loving girlfriend, new job, and both planning for the future together. Hey, that's great. What could go wrong? My job description stated to work on servers, networks, help desk support, and assist with higher level technician. There was no mention I had to report to him. My boss was the director. The reality was the opposite. I was a glorified secretary for the higher level technician. I had over 10 years of tech experience, but I was only fit to answer the phone. Even when I answered the phone, it was the wrong way of doing it. The high level technician Raymond was very micromanaging to the thousandth degree. So you got a bait and switch with this job. Okay, then it's time to find a new one and get out of there, but don't quit until you actually have something else. If I did any slight difference than his way, I was getting ripped a new one by him. I had enough and spoke to my director to get clarification. The director stated that Raymond was not my boss, was not my boss, he was. I did not have to clear things with him and he would talk to him. Nothing changed. Raymond would leave for the day here and there, and I was assigned other texts to babysit me since I was new. Those other texts were, were amazed and said, Bro, you are rocking this place. You don't need our help. 
but we are here to help. They spoke positive reviews to the director. Sounds like this Raymond guy just isn't going anywhere in the world and probably hates you because you obviously, he can tell he, you're better than him and are going to surpass him one day. Probably be his boss one day. At the end, I started to look for another job since it wasn't changing. Um, Raymond was that was still not letting up and I was stressed out. The director stated to me, look, don't leave, I will fix this. Don't leave, okay. I believed him and canceled an interview I had that, that, that looked like a sure thing. Later that week, I was terminated at the end of my probation, January 2018. You gotta be shitting me. That jackass obviously screwed things up for you. Now you lost your job. You had an interview and it could have been better, but you, you listened to that one guy and look what you got. Gentlemen, as I always say, trust your gut in many situations. And if the situation isn't good, a job situation, find something else. If, the, if there are limited opportunities, just keep on grinding. You'll find something. The reason stated by the director... Yeah, it's not a good fit, and also a little birdie told told me about you. When I pressed him, who said what he clammed up? What he said he clammed up. I believe my old former boss was at it again. He said, "Look at my old posts." I was burnt out, stressed out, and now unemployed. I had saved enough money to weather the storm for a long time, but did not plan to stay unemployed for that long. This was January, and I figured the best time to apply for a school district job was in the summertime. I figured I would take a few months off, relax, and further my training a bit. Well, that was the original plan. So let's remember how he was there for his girl when she her teaching job was not... Uh, she didn't get a new contract, and she was nervous and scared. He was her rock by her side. Now he's out of a job. Now you would think that it would be nice if she was by his side. Well, watch this. During December slash January, there was a winter party with her friends. I went with her. Tony was there. Remember, Tony's the jerk-off friend of hers that she friend-zoned and, and hates this guy. And saw me, and everyone shook my hand, and Tony made it obvious not to shake my hand. I, why, why the hell are you still with her if she's still hanging out with this dude? I was talking to the main leader of the group, since he was the host of the party, and it was at his home. We got along fine. As we were leaving, I saw from the corner of my eye another of her friends had hugged my girlfriend. He held he held her not in a friend hug, but a lo little longer and longing. I talked to myself about my I talked myself out of my bad thoughts and ignored it for a while. We left the party together. Trust your gut. Uh, what did my girlfriend do while I was unemployed? She was supportive at the start. When I told her my plan, she was all gung ho. Then in March and April, here comes May, girlfriend and, girlfriend and we started to have more arguments and it was becoming draining and I was losing focus. Tony came back in the picture and started to invite my girlfriend to more hangouts. Of course, she probably goes to Tony and tells him all about your problems. This is why you don't have a girlfriend with guy friends to hang out with. She goes to Tony, tells him everything. He's more than happy to listen and say, you know, you know, be that ear to listen to her problems, even though she friend zoned him. And he's inviting her out. My girlfriend really wanted to spend as much time with her friends and catch up as possible. I figured, go ahead, which would give me the time to study and get one more certification. Okay, so it's not like this dude sitting on the couch all day watching reruns of freaking Jerry Springer. This guy's studying to get a new certification so he can get something better. But she doesn't like him sitting around while she's working, even though he's actually working on getting something better. She was pulling away, drinking more with her friends, and making plans with the guy, Sarge, from the winter party. Uh-uh. That's when you got to lay down the law. You should have laid down the law before. No hanging out with guy friends. Now she's making plans to hang out with other guy friends. I'm sure I should have smacked him a bunch of times. You guys are probably like, SSM, where are the smacks? I guess I'm not in a smacking kind of mood today, but he deserved a smack for that. Fine. Smack. You should have dealt with it. She assured me it was in my head. I, I asked her what was going on, and she assured me it was in my head, and she only loved me. How many guys have heard that bullshit before? What my girlfriend did not know is I was applying to every job under the sun and was getting nowhere. I reached out to a former intern who became a director at a former employer, and I gave him a letter of recommendation. I sat in the interview panel and voted for him to get his first job with us. To tell me if I became a boss, I would want to be on your team. Well, here was the chance, I, and I applied and never got the call back. When it rains, it pours, guys. Uh, one day... We were in bed, and I was stressed and frustrated, and nothing was going my way. My girlfriend picked up on it. She says, sweetie, what is wrong? And I said, I can't get any traction. 
I don't know what to do. My network doesn't return my calls, no interviews, nothing. She says, it's okay, don't sweat it, I am here. He said to her, look, my worst nightmare right now is you leaving or walking out of me. Smack! Don't say that, dude. I get you're stressed and worried, but you can't make your girlfriend your therapist and telling her about how your, your worst nightmare is... You guys get my point. Not a good way to go. She says, I would never leave you. I got you and I love you. You hear me? My girlfriend mentioned why I don't stop by her place <clears throat> after she gets off work so we can go out and make me feel better. She lived 45 minutes away. I figured, why not? The majority uh, was her coming to my place. I went to her place and she was not there. I called her and she'd forgotten and need to stay at work for a bit. But she was on her way home Don't and don't leave. I stayed at a local park for an hour. She meets up with me and we hang out. This happened two more times. Girlfriend kept, kept on staying late at work. That's real nice of her. Real thoughtful. This is when you check her on this bullshit. But her actions, her words are one thing. Her actions are something else. You always pay attention to people's actions, guys. She invited me over to her job and we had a date after work. I saw her male teacher co-worker and when uh, she waved to him, he had a smirk on his face. Also, she kept on talk talking a lot about her principal. Then her car had issues and she called me that it wouldn't start. I tell her I'd be over and can use my AAA membership to have it towed to her place. She said she would let me know in a few minutes. What do you mean you let me know? I'm offering you AAA. I didn't hear from her on it other than I forgot and I'm sorry. When I asked her sister at her parents' house in a reunion, her sister said that she was the one who went over to pick her up. I told the sister that I was on my way back, but the girlfriend said she would call me and never did. The sister looked at me and said, then did she call me? If you were on the way. It doesn't make sense. I was stuck in traffic a bit, and it was a long night until she found her keys too. A lot of things that didn't seem to make sense to either of us. Because your girlfriend's lying, because shit, things are going on behind the scenes. With maybe another teacher, a principal, Tony, who the hell knows? She came over one night, and it was my mom's birthday, and we, and we, uh, we the family, were taking my mom out to the restaurant. As we got out to the car, I grabbed my girlfriend's hand, and she pulled away. My mom saw that. While we were eating at the restaurant, this group of four people from another table got up and lit left. I had my arm around her, and she made, me, made a, st a stink how my arm was around her and was uncomfortable. By the way, guys, uh, you can tell English is not this guy's first language, so, what, so bear with me as I'm reading this. I whisper in her here, what the hell is going on? Uh, what, well, you don't want people to know we are dating? We will talk about this later. Much later, my mom had ex ex uh, explained to me, and she she the, saw the hand and her reje re rejection about the group that was leaving. My mom thought something was off and wondered if she had checked out, which leads to the next part. Now it's May 2018. We are arguing a lot more. I had enough and called her out on her bad behavior. They waited this long to call her out on her bad behavior. She's an a-hole, but part of the reason that she's acted this way is because you haven't laid down the law with her, her initial bullshit. This is why I say, guys, that when men act weak, the women lose respect for them, they start pulling more bullshit, and if the guy doesn't check her on it or call her on it, they'll be even more bullshit. So we have here. Every other sen sentence was, my friends, plans of my friends, didn't I tell you? I say to her, what is your problem? You have time to meet with your friends during the week and weekend. Why am I getting breadcrumbs? She says, what? I can't hang out with my friends? There's one thing hanging out with your friends, but you're her main guy. But she ain't treating you like that. He says to her, look, in the last three weeks, I barely saw you for a few hours on two occasions. Yet you had dinner with coworkers, friend groups, and Sarge every other day. What the hell? Dude, he, see? You shouldn't have allowed this. She says, what? What do you want from me? I said to her, just be supportive. Be here in my corner is all I ask. I shouldn't be asking. She says, are you asking me to choose between my friends and you? He says to her, look, I see two outcomes when you decide. In life with me or life without me, pick which one you want. And she says, it's not my fault you don't have a job. See? Now, I get this has been a while now, and she obviously, a gal wants a guy that has a future and, and, and actually a present and has an income, but at the end of the day, he's trying. He really is getting that certification and all that. It's just not working. But he was by her by her side during the tough times. It's bullshit, but this is how they operate. <coughs> she said, I told you to roll with it until you found something better. 
He says, look, this is temporary. If you stick stick it out with me, my plans were by fall or winter to get him on a knee. But your actions tell me you want out. She was wanting me to call it all off. I tell her to think it over. Don't decide when we are heated. But all I can offer is some, something long term. But I'll not be fighting for someone who does not want to stay. She agreed and she went home. And two days later, we had a phone call that was something like this. Well, this relationship, ever since he lost his job, has just been going down the tubes, as you all can see. And it never ceases to amaze me. Guy can be great to a girl, be by her side. He loses his job. She may be supportive initially, but if he doesn't get one pretty damn soon, bye-bye. Either she'll leave him immediately or to be this shit. He says to her, so you decided. What is your choice? Did you speak to your parents for guidance? She says, look, we're both not happy, so call it. He says, why me? You want out. You can call it. I think we can fix this. He says, yes, I know. I was dumb. She says, I'm just getting my friends back and they're important to me. And she starts crying. Of course she was crying. This guy should have just broken up with her. Not, not leaving it in her hands. This guy's put too much in letting her be the leader instead of him being the leader. He says to her, ah, so you made your choice. Let me ask, when did you stop loving me? Good luck getting a straight answer, dude. She says, please, don't make me. And she answers in crying. He says, oh, wow, really? You did not. Uh, he says, uh, this is where I think she was messing with Sarge or someone from work. He says, look, stop wasting time and end it. And she says, you end it. Oh, my God. So they're back and forth. You end it. No, you end it. This is ridiculous. He says to her, it's simply repeat after me. It's over. He says, great. It hurts like hell. I respect your decision. I don't agree with it, but I respect it. I wish you all the best, but I will forever remember you leaving me at my worst. When I stood with you at my at your worst, remember? And she says, no, don't say it. It's not like that. And he says, am I lying? That's how I'm taking it. Goodbye. And he hangs up the phone. I know. I told you there's a lot of dialogue between the two people here. So, loses his job. It isn't very long before she starts hanging out with her friends and other dudes treating him like shit. That's the thanks he gets. I was a mess. I had no job, no girlfriend, nothing going my way. My family came in and showed me that they had my back. I did not leave my place for a few days. I did not know when it was the day or the night in my mind. In my mind, it was playing games with me, hearing I love you and would never leave you and seeing the reality of it. That's why you pay attention to people's actions, not their words. My sister helped me by packing all my ex's items and she drove them to, the ex to, to Goodwill. My sister also succumbed, scrubbed my social media, and in all photos or mentions of the ex. A cousin mentioned to mail my ex all the paper mementos, put the sources, the source address as her father's business to her home, with no letter attached. The message should be clear of, I am done with you. I started to get phone calls from bars and unknown callers. I blocked her email, phone, and family email, and phone numbers. Okay, you're scrubbing her from your life. End of story. That's the way to go. No more no begging or pleading or any bullshit like this. The relationship has just been just winding down for a while now. Uh, then summer passed. I did not want to touch anything tech-related. I wanted something new. I trained in real estate and decided to change careers. I also got my public notary license as well and started my small business. In the middle of studying for my real estate exam in February 2019, I got a phone call from a phone number I did not recognize. Huh, I wonder who it could be. I let it go to voicemail, and I play the voicemail, and it was her. She was saying, it's me. I'll call you tonight, okay? What I tell you, they always come back. But they always come back when their options are, are limited. The guy they really like dumped them, or that prospect didn't work. Then they'll go to you, they think is a sure thing. I do a trace in the phone number, and it turns out it was from the county mental health services. <laughs> I was not sure if it was a joke. The phone call was on Wednesday, and I was fuming. I called the phone number on Saturday, and the voicemail said, Hi, this is X from the County Mental Health Services. Please leave a name and number, and I will get back to you. Keep in mind, she is still a teacher. So the girl calls, and it's from the mental, the loony bin. He calls back later on, and they say, leave a name and number. He's her phone call. I call up my cousin, and he calls the number and calls me back laughing. He says, bro, you sent her to the loony bin. Respect. I did not wish her any Ill will, Ill will. I wished her to be happy. But then it dawned on me. She may have gone through her own rock bottom moment and was wanting me to be there for her. F that. I never called her or followed up with her. Good job, bro. You're with her during the tough times. And then you had tough times. And she very quickly checked out. No doubt was hooking up with other dudes. Treating you like crap. Not being by your side. 
Now she's calling you when she's in the loony bin, probably looking for somebody to help her. Nope. I've gone out with women since her. I dated a 22-year-old when I was 36 years old. She chased after me, but that is a different story. The pandemic happened with lockdowns, so my prospects I lined up vanished. I continued my studies and landed a few jobs. I am now in a tech field for the last two years and change. Now I'm making more money than I've ever had before and room to keep going up. Awesome. He kept on grinding, went through a lot of tough times, but he eventually got the jobs. He was out of tech for a little bit. They got back to tech and now making more money than ever. And the, and the sky is the limit. That's why you don't give up, guys. I haven't dated much, not much interest, interest for my part. I've been enjoying my hobbies and just living my peace, my life in peace. Now I'm grateful for the director that terminated my job. I would not have known my girlfriend that would, would do me duty, do me dirty. I would, have, I would have not known that focusing on myself would bring me so much more money and advancement than I was with her. Thank you. And that is the end of that crazy back and forth story. But the point is this, guys, you, you, you be there for your girl and be a rock if she's deserving. But if she's not there with you when, during your hard times, that tells you everything you need to know about her. And he, at the end, is grateful that he got fired because he got to see her true colors. But the dude focused on bettering himself and he didn't give up, even though obviously at some point she was feeling like it wasn't going to work out. And eventually it was all right. And he said by focusing on himself instead of focusing on women, now he's kicking butt in life. And she's in the fucking loony bed. So guys, let this be a lesson to all you relationship guys and be aware of that. It tr- People can say a lot of things, but it's their actions that really show you who they are. So I wish this guy the best. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And guys, you come across a good story like to share, definitely email it to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just make sure you email me the link to the article or story, and I'll definitely cover it. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. I'll catch you next time.